Welcome, Kenneth. Uh, welcome to the uh, annual, the, 20, the 2021 annual convention. Uh, really happy to have you in, uh, to join us. Uh, introduce yourself for us. Tell us a little bit about who you are and how you came to be a demographer. Well, <clears throat> actually, uh, I fell into it. And I, I don't have a degree in demography, but I'll tell you this, it, it was an interesting thing. Um, my, my wife and I had an advertising agency in Connecticut and uh, we uh, controlled uh, you know, regional accounts. One of the accounts was American Honda. We sold motorcycles for them. And we had 140 dealers from the tip of Maine to Pittsburgh to Washington, DC. The, uh, the bike sold, it was, like, it was like falling off a log until 1986 and the, uh, all of a sudden the sales of uh, uh, Japanese motorcycles um, dropped precipitously. I mean, and Kawasaki, Suzuki and Yamaha did the same thing and Harley started to sell. We couldn't figure out why. By 1992, business for the Japanese brands had fallen 80% and all the dealers closed. And I mean, all of them, unless they were selling lawnmowers or cars, they were cooked. So, uh, we had no idea. So we shook hands with American Honda and we said, well, I guess, the, you know, the, the market's gone. We don't know why. We, we really tried to understand it and we couldn't. Uh, but uh, 1996, I'm in my office reading a full page editorial during the uh, October uh, 96 election of Clinton versus Dole. And it was an indictment of Generation X. It was saying the people that were born 1965 to 1984 were a bunch of lazy slacker couch potatoes who were not involving themselves in the political process. And they were not voting, they were not running for office, they were not giving money, they were not giving of their time, they were just off, it was an awful generation. And what was the United States gonna to come to if Generation X was our future? And they even had some confessions from Generation X in this full page article. I had 40 people working for me, 20 of them were Xers and I didn't have any lazy people. So I called in our research department and asked, our researcher was a really brilliant kid. I said, go find out everything you can about Generation X. I want Bureau of Labor Statistics data, CIA fact book, whatever you can find, census data. And he came back uh, three days later with, with his report and said, uh, Generation X will never perform at the level of the boomers. And I said, so they're lazy. And he said, no, Ken, there's fewer of them. I said, wait a minute, are we comparing 20 year generations with 20 year generations? 20 year generations of baby boomers born, born 1945 to 64 and this generation born 65 to 84. And he said, yeah. And I said, and there are fewer of them. He said, yeah, they had fewer parents uh, that were born uh, 25, uh, 1925 to 1944 called the silent generation. He said, they didn't, they didn't produce many kids. So the generation X is 11% smaller. It's about 9 million people fewer and peak to Valley is about a 35% free fall from the peak of the boomers to the bottom of generation X. That was a major discover, discovery for me. And, and because what, what that was is we discovered that we have a hole in our population. And the hole right now is 37 to 56. And the, the, the people just weren't, aren't there because they weren't born. So we knew, I, and I said, I think we just solved the motorcycle issue because we knew we sold motorcycles to men 16 to 24, that was it. 25, they sold the bike, got a ring, got married. And um, what happened was the baby boomers, born 45 to 64, just exited the demo. And our, all of our dealers were on 5% after-tax profit. They were franchises. And an 11% free fall in the size of their market erased them. Now, that's, an, that's amazing power. And, and that's what started me. And that, that consumed me. I had all this marketing background. We actually closed our uh, agency in 2001. And I became a demographer. I started writing books. I started speaking. Now I, I, mean, I can't stop speaking. I, I just got back from Chicago talking to truckers. They want to know why they can't find uh, truck drivers. And I said, because they don't exist. <laughs> so um, that's how I got into it. And so uh, I, I, let me just say one more thing about that. I, I called um, uh, uh, Dr. Nicholas Eberstadt, PhD from Harvard. I saw him, an article that he wrote in uh, the Wall Street Journal. And um, he's probably the best demographer on the planet. So he said, the difference between you and me, that's what he said to me. He says, our numbers are the same. We, we understand the numbers. He said, but you understand marketing and nobody in the State Department understands marketing. They don't, they don't even know how to spell it. So uh, that's the difference. I, my background is a combination of marketing and demographics. 
I marry the two and that makes me very different. Yeah, that's great. You know, I love your quote, uh, your quote, you know, demographics precipitates economics. You know, that's one of the, one of the things that I really like. And, and, uh, it's what you just said. It's numbers. It's all economics is always numbers, but then it's also behaviors, which of course, marketing is always trying to figure out everybody's, you know, anticipate the behaviors. Um, have you seen any, have you seen any examples yet of people that are either already suffering from not paying attention to the numbers with Gen Y or are already benefiting tremendously? Have we seen anything there yet? Well, let me give you an older uh, story. And this just happened in 1998. Uh, I got a call from Levi Strauss. I, everybody wore Levi's. You know, it, it, was, it was like a uniform back in, in the uh, 60s and 70s and even part of the 80s. But 1996, uh, Levi Strauss was still producing more jeans than, they, than uh, they, they couldn't meet the market. The market was so demanding, they, they couldn't make enough product. But I got a call from the chief marketing officer in San Francisco, and I'm a little podunk agency in Connecticut. And the chief marketing officer said to me, um, Ken, I can't pay you for what, what I'm going to ask you for, but I need, we need some advice. We know you understand the clothing industry because you grew, I grew a, a jean store from, from about $10 million to $400 million. You know, that was one of my clients. And they said, we're, we're very aware of that. But he said, uh, we're starting to notice that our, our demand is falling off. Do we have a, a, a demographic problem? And I said, who's your customer? And he said, um, a man or woman, uh, 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 16 to 34, 18 to 34. And, and I said, okay, uh, why do you cut it off at 34? And he said, well, basically people can't fit in the product anymore. They just, they just it's too tight for them to wear. And I said, okay. I said, you realize you're a baby boomer business? And he says, of course, we know that. I said, the last baby boomer was born in 1964. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, add 34 years to 1964. What do you come up with? And he said, 1998. And I said, what year is it? And he said, 1998. He said, do we have a problem? And I said, you'll see. They fell from about $8 billion privately held, uh, domestically produced, and um, their sales fell about 75%. And that's, that's the power of this. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a, 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 the, the, the biggest plus right now, right now, as we speak, the population of the United States is 330 million. Okay, when you count the illegals and dem demographers do because they're here. Baby boomers in, uh, as part of that population are about 80 million. They were about 78 million of them born as a little bit of immigration during that period. So the people are, that are 57 to 76 are still about... 80 million people. They had 88 million kids, 88 million. So that's, you, those two combined are half of our population. The kids are finally moving out. As the kids move out, they don't take the lawnmower, they don't take the vacuum cleaner, they don't take the food out of the cupboard, they don't take the bed, they buy their own. So consumption of consumer products, as Generation Y millennials set up households, is going to explode and it is exploding as we speak and it's going to continue to explode for probably the next 10, 15 years. But that's not the big story. The big story is the fact that the kids are leaving home and there is not enough structure for them to live in. So unless they're gonna live in their cars, sleep in their cars, we need to build structure. We just did a major research project for Bain Capital Real Estate on multifamily housing and it blew us away. And that uh, multifamily housing uh, is off the charts and single family dwellings are going to be off the charts. Remember now, millennials are 17 to 36, which means that because the kids don't grow up until they're 30, we still have uh, you know, 13 years of millennials that are, are not really leaving home yet, but they will. They're leaving home, starting households, getting married, having kids. They're going to live in urban environments in cities for a while until they, they uh, need to educate their children and then they're gonna move, they're gonna start sub suburbs just like their parents, the baby boomers. So big, big story. We're 25 million housing units short of our needs. Yeah. 25 million, count them. Um, let's talk about Gen Y as a vertical market. I think you've covered most of it. The one topic that I'm interested in is, is SMB, small and medium business. Um, 
as you said, they're still kind of, they're, they're coming to SMB, they're coming to franchises, you know, they're going to be running small businesses as they, you know, as they, uh, as they age, do you, it, is it pretty much just straight up numbers? Or do you think they'll run those businesses differently than their parents? Yeah, well, the, the numbers are so huge. You, you have to remember that, that the, the generation that they're following, Generation X, no, Generation X, the Generation X age group that is 37 to 56 years old is occupied by two distinct groups. One, Indigenous Generation X that are born here. And the other one is several million, probably could be as many as 20, 25 million uh, Latinos that came here because Generation X could not supply the labor necessary to satisfy the boomers. So they, they sucked in the Latinos like a vacuum. Let's put the Latinos aside for a second and just talk about Generation X. What's happening right now is uh, Generation X it, it can't fill the footprint um, of the exiting baby boomers. And the baby boomers post COVID are leaving the labor force. Now remember they're 56, 57 to two, 76 years old. So it's, it's really time for them anyway. Small business, what you're going to see is a lot of small businesses are going to go on the block. And I believe that as, you know, it's no mystery that the baby boomers have money and they're leaving a lot of money to their kids. These kids are going to open businesses. They're probably going to open existing businesses on their own or start businesses. And a lot of them are so talented. They don't even realize their talent. They really don't. Uh, my uh, son-in-law, got hired by Travelers Insurance. He's uh, 28 years old. And uh, I said, what are you doing for Travelers? And he said, oh, I just put an app on the phone for them. And I said, you put an app on the phone? I don't know how to turn off my light on my phone. I said, you put an app on the phone? And he said, yeah. He said, the, the, it, what, what it will prevent is them from losing money in the fires in California. And I said, really? He said, yeah, you take a picture of a house, you answer some questions. Uh, they gave me all the data. They gave me all the aerial photography. They gave me all of that. And we came up with a, a, a perfect al algorithm and it prevents them from insuring bad homes. And I said, that's generation Y. That's millennials. Yeah. And I, I encourage people. I said, hire generation Y. You, you know, in fact, people say, should I hire generation Y? And then I stop myself and I say, no, no, you shouldn't. What you should do is you should hire a chief human resource officer who is Generation Y and have that person hire Generation Y because you'll never speak their language. Yeah. They'll, you'll ne they'll never understand you. You will never understand them. Don't pretend to. Just marvel at what they do for you. Yeah. Well, that is, you know, you know, you just hit on in the reason today in the business world, it was in, it was in the in Wall Street again yesterday, the hottest topic is not technology, it's actually labor. But of course, what you just described is the, you know, the coming labor force is going to be all about technology and, and that, you know, is really going to change. I think that's going to change economics is my thinking. And, um, you know, you, you know, can you talk a little bit about how you see, you know, how you see the technology of the millennials, the technology they bring in demand you know, how is that, how do you think that'll change the economics of, of business in general? You know, uh, what, what do you, what sorts of things do you see? They'll control it. it, it and, I'm, and I'm not kidding because and, and I just made a joke about not being able to turn off the light on my phone. I, I, a lot of times I can't, I can't figure out where, how do I do that? And, and, and my son-in-law is putting apps on phone. And so what's going to happen is it, you think we have an explosion in technology now? Tech is, is the Generation Y millennials are going to bring to the table a level of understanding of the, the technical knowledge that to run businesses that we don't understand, that we really don't. And they're going to run with it. And it, it just absolutely amazes me when people think that, you know, people still are still making fun of millennials. They're still calling them slackers. I mean, like, like they did for Generation X, they're calling them snowflakes. They're saying they don't want to work. They, you hire them and they don't show up. Don't worry about it. Once they have to feed themselves, they're, they're going to be just like everybody else, only they're going to have a much higher level of understanding of uh, artificial intelligence, of, of technology, com it, totally, completely. It's a very exciting time. It really is. And we're right on the verge of that happening, right on the verge of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and another one of your great quotes, population creates talent which in my world as a mathematician, that's, that's a statement about the normal distribution. But if the, if the area under the curve goes up by 20 million, the number of people that are exceptionally intelligent goes up as well, right? And so, you know, even the distribution is gonna to be to our advantage. Well, Generation Y millennials are 88 million. The generation that they're following, the footprint that they're gonna fill is 20 million smaller, 20 million smaller. So what's gonna happen? Well, first of all, we're going to have a labor shortage for some time until these kids come on board. And talent, you know what, an excellent example of this, and I'll, let's just throw this out at you, is um, law enforcement. The, the, uh, the graduating cadets in Manhattan is at an all-time high talent level. Why? Because they're, for the last 20 years, law enforcement has had a problem uh, and inviting talent to come into law enforcement because they didn't exist. They were from a small generation, a much smaller generation than the baby boomers. The generation that's, that they sucked in was Generation X. Now the talent pool is infinitely bigger. I think it's like 33% bigger. And so the talent that we're going to have for cops is so much better. We're going to have better cops. And we're also inviting a lot of women in just in time for crime to go down because the number of criminals Crime is committed by men, period, 15 to 30 years old. They commit 70% of the crime. That number is, is shrinking right now in our population. So I have fewer criminals, better cops, safer yeah, place. That's great. All right. Um, I think we're kind of, let's go, let's just go to final thoughts. You know, we're talking to, to people in the finance world, bankers, equipment finance companies, fin you know, um, what should they do? I mean, you mentioned one thing, hire a millennial to lead HR. So that's a good, that's a good piece of advice. But um, what else, you know, what else do you advise your, your clients? I mean, what's the takeaway? Well, you've heard of the woke movement. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what woke is, you know, and people complicate it. What it is is simply um, representing, being representative of something other than money, just money. Be representative of a, uh, of a, of a, philanthropic task that you're trying to perform. I, I was just speaking at a, a trucking organization last week in Ohio, and they've uh, taken on autism as a ca cause. Now, what does autism have to do with trucking? Nothing. What does it have to do with life? Everything. So the woke movement is stand for something. So I advise my clients when, with respect to Generation Y, because Generation Y is going to dictate our culture. And Generation Y, Black Lives Matter, the woke movement, standing for something, kinder, gentler, is going to be a way of life. It just is. So get over it. The marketplace will be very, very different. Yeah. So that's, that's you know, as a physicist, I always say, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to fudge the laws of physics, right? I mean, demographics no. is a little bit similar. <laughs> so yeah, very, it's a, very much so. it's a, it's a great, it's great advice. Well, Kenneth, uh, I, I always enjoy speaking to you, uh, reading your books. I'll tell the audience, these books are great books uh, to understand the fundamentals that we just discussed. And uh, they'll of course be on the screen here, uh, or they've been on the screen. Thank you very much. I, I, uh, I hope, uh, hope we talk again soon. My pleasure, my friend, you take care. Okay. God bless.